Or are we both? Nicole, I just started the recording right now. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Today is uh, April 24th. I'm Nicole Davis. I'm branch manager with, uh, with our Berkshire Hathaway Ca um, Home Services California Properties, and I am out of our Covina office. Uh, today, I am training on something I have a lot of fun with. It is the pre-listing packet. Now, there's a lot of information available about a pre-listing packet. What I'm sharing with you today is information that I created, um, and I, I have some learning experiences that I think are going to benefit all of you thinking about the idea of a pre-listing packet, whether you've thought of it before or whether this training prompted you to start thinking about a pre-listing package this is going to be really key critical information for you to unlock your next listing so welcome today again it's april 24th this is berkshire hathaway home services california properties and this is our saturday series training on the pre-listing packet so first, I, I do want to offer some introductions. I'm Nicole Davis. I am branch manager for our Covina office. We have about 40 names on the roster. Um, we're one of our smaller offices. We're uh, a satellite office, or um, I'm sorry, like a, a, a touchpad office. We have about 1,000 square feet. I manage probably about uh, 10 to 15 producers, and I am also a producing agent. I have a team of uh, four right now. Now, uh, my son is coming into the business. I've been licensed. I'm going on my second renewal, so eight years now. To give you some background, um, I do come from, uh, you know, legacy family business. Uh, my family uh, was, they were morticians and funeral directors and coroners in Ventura County for generations. So um, I come from a place where the entrepreneurial spirit was very alive. Uh, it was bred in the mindset, basically. Um, I started with a paper route when I saw my older brother, uh, you know, have money for the things that he wanted. Um, I wanted a paper route and I got my own paper route. I think when I was about eight or 10, um, I, I remember, you know, I remember folding papers in second grade. Um, so it, 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 there was a mindset of if you want it, you're going to have to work for it yourself. So um, how many of us out there have, um, I, Allie will have to start some polls, but how many of us out there started with that entrepreneurial spirit? I'd love to know what other, you know, avenues we took as youngins um, that really started us on this path, because no one in this forum just arrived here on accident. It really has been by design from all of your experiences. Um, awesome. I heard one from Alon, a paper route at 12. I love it. Gosh, this is a common theme. Um, there are ways, and we know with our with our kids today, I, I have 12-year-old twins, and, and honestly, that's the divine path that led me to real estate, aside from the background, aside from, you know, all the job setups that really were leading up to this. It, it was really my 12-year-old my twin daughters. But when we look at um, things like like uh, Gary V. I think um, there's the entrepreneurial kids. Um, it, you know, you can Google these ideas, and I, um, you know, I, I really encourage those that that have young ones to, you know, to um, go down that path with your children. You arrived here for a reason. They're probably going to arrive there. Might as well start them off, you know, now. Um, but uh, I, I did have that history. Um, my my first job outside of answering um, phones at the mortuary was um, sales. I wanted that summer job. Uh, you know, and um, I, I grew up in a small farm town and I wanted to work in the biggest building in town. It was four stories and um, that job was sales. It was literally a boiler room. I didn't know it walking into it when I was 15 and a half. I got my uh, worker's permit and the only job that was hiring 15 and a half year olds was in a boiler room. So I started selling uh, newspapers. 
uh, you know, in on the fourth story in the biggest building in town um, with a bunch of curmudgeons who were smoking and they had their ashtray there and literally you watch old movies about sales and this is the environment I stepped in. I didn't know any better and I wanted to make money and there was this opportunity to do certain actions and walk away with a reward. And I was very, very interested in that. So the next job ended up being, you know, over the holidays, uh, you know, at a retail sales store. I think it was something like Hot Topic, something like that, where it was, you know, tchotchkes and, and everyone came through there for the holidays. So I had this opportunity to understand that my ability to connect with people was what resulted in higher paychecks. Um, so again, I, I mentioned my twins. Um, I worked for, um, I had a lot of marketing background. Um, you know, my first job out of college was with a group of anesthesiologists. So I did medical billing and time consulting um, for the 80 doctors in the Pomona Valley Hospital um, system, as well as the San Antonio Hospital system. So um, I, I had this ability to understand Time could be really critical. Time could be the difference between life or death. Um, the next job after that, my first, you know, real college graduate job that warranted using some of those skills was a marketing job. I was marketing director for the first company that um, wrote software for the BlackBerry, the wireless BlackBerry. And that was a lot of fun. I had a Wall Street Journal ad experience where I got to write ad copy. And I understood that, wow, uh, if you are in the right time at the right place and you say the right words to the right connection, you're going to have some major, major traction that results uh, in some great things for your life. I um, was laid off from that job with the tech industry and um, I jumped over to my great, my grandfather's company. I wanted security. And I'm just giving you my story to tell you how I landed here. It was that security that I was seeking that led me to Weyerhaeuser, the largest landowner in the country. Um, and they were lumber producers, warehouse um, distributors, building materials. And I had a fabulous job. I had $17 a, um, a month benefits for me, for my children, and for my parents. Uh, you know, I was looking for phenomenal st stability and I got it and it was still shaken from me um, in, in ways that, you know, it, this is a God journey that unfolded in front of me, uh, you know, looking for that security, uh, you know, and I was just at that. I was, I was literally a couple weeks shy from the five year mark to have those benefits for life. And um, th that was in 2008. I also found out that I was having twins, uh, you know, two weeks before I was laid off. So, that was 2008. Now, I'm just an example of, of a reiteration of what may have happened in your life. It may not have, but you will be shaken at certain points of your life. This industry will test that just about every day in really positive and beneficial ways. I can't wait for all of you to unfold your story in front of me, and, it, and it's a blessing. Um, but that 2008 led me to get my twins through kindergarten and and um, I started my first year in the business was open houses in the four hours that they were at um, in kindergarten. And, um, and so that, you know, that really relied on the open house. That's how I ended up here eight years later. And so that's a little bit of introduce, you know, introducing. I, one, there are so many key ideas that, that we can gather from our leaders, from those learners, from the TED Talks, from, from all of the greats that have gone before us. And there are some true real estate greats who have gone before us. Our founder, Bruce Mulhern, was one of those, and he was in touch with all of those names that you will hear repeated over and over and over throughout your career. Um, 
Zig Ziglar, uh, you know, the trainers that are still around today, Mike Ferry, you know, you will, you will hear these names, Tom Hopkins, you will hear so many names. And I, I want everyone here watching the training for now and future generations to know and understand our founder, Bruce Mulhern, was a part of that. And you will hear his name referenced. I was on a, um, I'm on the Mount Sac Real Estate uh, Advisory Committee for the Community College. And I heard Bruce's name referenced. Um, it, it was beautiful when you realize that you're in a cohort, you're in business with the greats. It, it's phenomenal. But one of the things that Bruce was uh, known to say is this same idea. And it, it, you know, from when you look at the origin of this idea, uh, I, there are some who um, attribute it to some British military. Plans are nothing, planning is everything. Failing to plan is planning to fail. And um, this is one that I absolutely love. Are, is everyone able to see my screen? I just wanna make sure it's still sharing. I'm going through a PowerPoint. Yes, Nicole. Great, thank you so much, Senior. Um, the proper planning prevents, and other people have different ways of saying it, but piss poor performance. So if we're not planning, we're really planning to fail. So you got the listing appointment. That's where we are. Some of us come into the business. We've got family and friends. We've got spheres. What are you gonna do when you get that appointment secured? If you haven't been there, you will be soon. And I'm so excited that you're gonna have a little bit of a backbone at the end of this class if you don't already have that super strong backbone that you know what you're doing next when you get that appointment, that next appointment. So now what? Planning is the process of thinking about the activities required to achieve a desired goal. What's your goal at the end of that listing appointment to get that signature to have a listing? It involves creation, maintenance of the plan, and sometimes a lot of psychological aspects. They require conceptual skills. You're gonna have to put a lot together, okay? The next thing we're gonna look at is what does a pre-listing packet do? How many of us have heard of the idea of a pre-listing packet before they saw the, the blurb to, to jump in today? I would love to know anyone's experience with the idea of a pre-listing package or was it totally foreign? Never heard of it. Got it. I'm gonna take that as never heard of it. And I do understand our forum today is the Saturday series training. Awesome, Alon, I love knowing that. Never heard of the pre-listing packet. Many call it the PLP. You might hear it referenced as the PLP. Awesome, Donna is letting us know that she's heard of it before. And um, I'm gonna take that as an indication that these are relatively new ideas. And, um, and I love being able to present it to you first. Um, some of us have heard of it, a pre-listing package. How many of us have it in place, ready to go? And have you thought of if that phone call comes in right now, if Aunt Sally tells you, hey, come on out, Xenia, come list my house. I'm ready, I'm going to Arizona. What are you gonna do at that point? What do you have as your backbone, okay? What is it? Let's first look at the objective. What is it gonna do? Persuasion prior to your listing appointment. So the ability to drop a packet off, and I've got two of these. Um, I have a new team member, Brianna, on my team. And um, we're dropping off a listing packet after the training today. What is this little envelope supposed to do? Okay, it is supposed to persuade your seller. It's supposed to secure your success. It's supposed to help you stand out against competition. And it is supposed to place a premium on your expertise. That is one thing that we as agents 
are, are absolutely, um, you know, we rely on that ability to put a premium on our service, especially in today's environment. When these home sellers start online, all home buyers and sellers, it, uh, the percentages, you'll hear this repeated so many times in, in the next few weeks, as you know, your new mind is opening up to the idea of real estate and how you can be involved, you're going to hear this over the next few years, over your career. Career, how many people start online? Where do they start? They start online. And, and if, if they are bombarded, if your sellers are bombarded with ads that say, you know, come, we'll list for 1%. Um, we'll give you the price that you want. We're going to give you everything you ever wanted for practically nothing. And we're going to make it seem so robotic and easy. It's going to take nothing off your back to just click on this little button and you need a way to put a premium on your service, on your expertise. As agents, I hope you, you really absorb that message. Learn to put a premium on your expertise. You are about to find out if you haven't already how tough this is. It is tough. It, everyone walks in the door knowing it's tough. We're commission only. We're commission based. And um, that is, that's a tough world to live in. Um, there is a premium for agents who can accomplish what they set out to do. And your sellers will happily pay that once they know and understand a little bit more. Part of our journey is education. But for now, this pre-listing package needs to help you put a premium on your expertise. It also is going to help you preemptively handle objections. Now I'm going to kind of do a little bit more um, jogging in and out on, uh, you know, through the MLS. The screenshot down below is a screenshot of me performing my um, CRMLS CMA, a comparative market analysis. So I am, before I switch uh, screens, I want to jump over to exactly where that screenshot is so that you know and understand how, um, how this uh, pre-listing package can help you uh, overcome objectives before you even get in the door. And it really is going to set your listing appointment up for success. Okay, so um, is everyone able to see my MLS screen behind? Um, now, I, am I sharing the CMAs here? Yep, we can see it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Xenia. So when you're performing your CMA and your manager will go over this, you'll also get this training for those new agents. You'll get this training through your board. I know my um, Citrus Valley does training on this. So you'll learn how to do this very quickly if you don't already. But a CMA, in case we don't know what those initials stand for, they, many people call them different things, a, a comparative marketing analysis or a comparative market analysis. So this is a report that, um, you know, uh, real estate greats like Alan Dalton are going to encourage you not to emphasize comparable because your sellers want to know and understand that their house is unique. There's nothing like it. And so it, it might be very important for you to make those initials a little bit, um, you know, a little less emphasis on the word comparable. Um, in any event, we need a report. That's what this report is a, a cloud CMA is another version of this through other tools in the MLS. Um, but the comparative market analysis allows you to go ahead and, um, uh, you know, put together some comparables. So I'm going to go ahead and um, edit this CMA, a comparable market analysis report that I had performed prior. And uh, just so you guys can see the, where you have options. So it, it, as you're putting your comparable report, uh, you know, together, um, you have that, that conversation with Aunt Sally, let's say. Aunt Sally tells you, I'm thinking about listing. Anyone who says the word I'm thinking about should immediately see a CMA, a comparative market analysis from you from their trusted resource, from their trusted realtor. And so in that conversation, one of another key things that, that Bruce was well known for repeating and emphasizing is this idea that 
we, we just, we're receptors. We're, um, we just have to listen. So talk less and listen. And you will hear Aunt Sally say whatever her objections are. Aunt Sally might tell you, Xenia, I'm thinking about it, but you know, I'm getting prompted from Zillow over here. And they said, I don't have to do any showings. And they said that they'll list it for 1%. So what can you tell me? You know, let's sit down and kind of talk about what the smartest thing is. And you might have picked up on, if you were listening, you would have picked up on Aunt Sally has an objection about the commission. Okay. You want to always, every single, every single conversation you have, I love the feedback guys, jump in with any questions, any stories. Um, I love the, the icon reactions, um, the more engagement. And this is just tip for, um, my husband teaches at the University of Laverne, he teaches stuff like neuro-linguistic programming and, um, you know, and business communication. And he was one of the first to teach online on one of their online platforms to bring online education to a major university. And, um, and so I want to encourage you on any Zoom that you're ever in, you will gain brownie points with, you know, any uh, you know, colleagues that you're interacting with by engaging. There's this, uh, there's a realm in the, in the online world where you need the reverb, you need the feedback to know you're on the right track. So thank you very much, Xenia. Now, um, Aunt Sally or any seller is going to give you the clues if you are listening. You will hear it. The more you know about this industry, they are telling you their story. There's an old saying that says, when they tell you who they are, listen, you know, uh, uh, they're going to tell you who they are. Um, they're going to tell you their objections from minute one. My first um, real listing, uh, my, uh, okay, actually it was my second. Um, it, it, was, um, it was a nice upscale neighborhood. And all I had to do was listen. And I heard that seller tell me she was looking for someone who would clean her windows. That was the deciding point. And you know, I was going to win it and I was going to clean the windows. You're not going to have that every time. But if you don't listen, you're not going to hear the objection when it comes across as a statement. They're going to say it as a statement. It's not going to be a question. So you've got to learn to read and uncode and decode. Okay. So um, in any event, you're having this conversation with Aunt Sally, you know, over Mother's Day and, uh, you know, your Mother's Day brunch. And she says, mm, yeah, but they're there. Um, Zilla says they'll give me everything I want. And, and it's only 1%. You have these pages on the CMA, aside from what they're going to teach you in, in the, at the board, aside from what they're going to teach you, um, you know, what your manager is going to teach you about how to create one of these reports. Um, there are additional pages in here that that let you talk about things like the importance of pricing. So when you hear a seller say, um, uh, well, I, you know, I don't have to sell. I don't have to sell. Um, you know, I, I just want to see if I can get. So when you hear those words, I don't have to, or I can, I just want to see that is basically going straight to that retail mindset. And then you know the objection you're facing when you step in the door is about pricing. They want to price it high. And in today's market, completely understandable, you know, there are certain things we have to do to show them where the market is going to land. But knowing that that page is out there, the importance of pricing, you're going to want to put that in your, your pre-listing packet, something on importance of pricing. Make sure it's in your CMA. Make sure you repeat that everywhere you can, okay? So I, I want to get to the meat and potatoes faster. I'm going a little bit slow. Um, but there are tools in here. You will um, know and understand where the objections are the more that you um, interact with your seller. So you're going to have that phone call prior to getting the appointment, confirming the appointment, and just repeating everything you know. And you're going to hear she's saying the word pricing again. She's saying, oh, I just want to see. Uh, she's saying, you know, um, we don't have to. And then you're going to know I've got to have this page in there that picks out the pricing option. Okay. So having your pre-listing packet ahead head helps you secure that success. It gets this information in their hand before you step in the door. Okay. Um, 
my first listing appointment without a pre-listing packet was three hours long. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but that's in time is money. Three hour long, you know, listing appointment is unacceptable. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have the roadmap. My, roadmap. My goal is to have a 20 minute listing appointment. And when you get to that spot, this packet will help you stick to your timeline. And it also helps you preemptively handle those objections for your seller to read the packet the night before and see, oh, pricing really matters. You know, pricing is going to limit, you know, this group of category. It's only going to bring those up there. And I want these to push these to go higher. <laughs> so there are things you can do with that listing appointment by having the right information, by listening to those objections and handling them through your listing appointment. Your pre-listing package is a flexible, breathable packet. It's going to be different every time, but you need that roadmap so that you know where you're going. Now, so that covers what is the pre-listing packet supposed to do. The next thing is what's included. What do I put in there? These are great questions. If you haven't thought about them at a rudimentary level, what, what are some ideas? What do you think now, anyone who's thought about this for 20 minutes, what are some ideas that you would want to put in your listing package to, um, you know, to, to enhance your experience for your seller? Any ideas? Cool, I love the chat. Let me just jump over there. A marketing strategy, I love it. How did you know? Did you see that on the screen or you just knew it? I love it. All right, Warren Buffett, Caroline, awesome, awesome. That's it, you guys are thinking about it. Pricing strategy, Leo, awesome job. Alon, I love it, marketing strategy. These are things that are going to just, you know, really decipher who you are and how you're different. Information about the neighborhood. Definitely, Deborah, you got to have that in there. If you don't, you're missing a major factor for them. They're asking, how well do you know my neighborhood? And what is truly going on in my neighborhood? Remember, guys, they have not, they've been in COVID. They've been stuck in a house, many of them. And they haven't seen the signs on the street. They don't watch the MLS. They do not know how much activity there is. They might see the house across the street has a, a line an hour long to get into the house. They might see that once a year. You know, maybe twice a year, but they're not really in it. You are the ones who are in it minute by minute. So you've got to convey that information to them. All great answers. And I love the feedback. You guys are really, really thinking about this. You're on your way to making sure your next listing has this information in it and that you stand out above and you're influencing your seller, helping them arrive at their right decision. So um, one of the questions when we think about what's in the pre-listing package, one is some people really get stuck here and I'm going to encourage you. I've got a great $30,000 lesson at the end of this slide that I think is going to be really useful for you. Don't get stuck. Okay. Just keep moving forward. Printed or online. I hear this all the time as a manager. Yeah, but they needed they i don't have anything online i i don't have i don't have a video um don't let that hold you up because you could be missing opportunity because of it so i want to give you some quick easy ways to go get something on each one of these banks when you design this, think of your audience. Some sellers are going to make their decision after you leave. Are you guys seeing my the PowerPoint again? Okay, I'm going to do, oh, good, good, good. Okay, just want to make sure that that you guys have that right reinforcement. Um, and I, I'm happy to, if you leave your email address in the chat at some point, um, I, I, I will email a copy of the slide to you in case you want to look at some of these samples. But um, think of, of who your audience is. The sellers, they some of them are going to want to make their decision after you leave. There's always, when you listen to great trainers, Tom Hopkins was one, I want to 
sleep on it. Mike Ferry repeats that one. What do you do when they say, I want to sleep on it? This is some scripting things that you probably have heard little references to. But the reality is today in today's environment, it's very competitive. They're probably not going to. Awesome. I love it. Good good job leaving your, your emails in there. I will send you these the PowerPoint. But um, in today's environment, they're probably not going to cave to like old traditional pressure. Okay. We want to be really authentic when we're trying to be their trusted, when our brand is the trusted advisor, we probably don't want to use that car salesman, you know, pressure. That's not the way in today's environment to arrive at a, a long-term predictable, um, productive business. It's just not. Um, our society has gone to this more authentic, transparent place. And online with real time, these are all ideas over the last 20, 30 years that have culminated to the way that business is done today. And you are with a brand that prides itself and designs itself with the strength and integrity behind it to make sure that you have a long-term business, a true business. This is not a flash in the pan. So you really don't want to, you, you know, there are some pressure tech, you know, tactics, but you're, you're truly trying to be that agent who's still standing at the end years for generations of, you, uh, you know, of their children's decision-making about real estate and investments. So the way to arrive there is to make sure you leave something on the table when you leave. You've got to have something hard and tangible because you might not be able to secure, they might not, they may not, depending on population and personality type. These are two ideas. You're going to hear those repeated. Um, I coach with, uh, with Debbie DeGroat. One thing I love when she trains on um, personality type. It's the same idea, Tom, uh, Tom uh, Robbins, um, Tom Robbins, but I can't remember her first name, but um, Robbins teaches on um, the disc. Um, we have uh, lots of resources around us. Bruce put us in touch with um, the bank system, um, B-A-N-C. Um, there, you know, academics are going to look at Myers Briggs. Um, you know, business people are going to maybe look at DISC, D-I-S-C. There are all types of personality tests, and there is a personality in each one of those systems where they are not going to make a quick decision. That's just in their nature. They're not. And so you've got to make sure for that seller, you have to make sure you leave something at the table when you leave. Okay. Um, another thing is population. Um, we have those, um, you know, memorial generation or um, the, the great generation, my great grandparents or your great grandparents or grandparents. Um, there are still some, you know, 90 and 100 year olds who are making decisions. There are still some 80 year olds making decisions. There's lots of them. And um, that population might have been forced to get online a little bit but they don't prefer it. It's not second nature to them yet. Um, and so they're also a population that's gonna want a hard copy, but don't let that stop you. If you are a millennial, you need, you need both sides of the spectrum because the way we're gonna train you, you're not gonna say no to business. No, we're not, we're not here to say no to business. We are here to pick and choose what works for us, what's acceptable to us, what matches, uh, you know, our style, what, what, um, you know, what types of business we like to do. We have that leisure, we have that freedom, and we have that, you know, independence. And, uh, you know, our skills, our talents, they rise to the top. Our strengths come out when there's that synergy. So yes, we're looking for the personality type that matches with me. And guess what? My personality type is probably going to be okay with the both. They're going to want to see both, you know, a hard copy and online. But um, my grandfather, you know, would not be okay if I strolled in the door with my iPad. 
that's not going to work for him. Um, you know, and on the same vein, you know, um, some of my peers' children are not going to be okay if I don't stroll in the do door with, uh, you know, some kind of online presence. Um, and, and if I'm not demonstrating my technology, um, and my savvy, then they are, they're just, they're, they're going to tune out. They're done. Okay, so the need for both is, is you know, is going to be critical in your, you know, career, um, but don't let it stop you if you don't have one or the other, if your mindset is geared, if one is easier, you got to race down that path now, um, and then, you know, just use the easy tips to get ready for, you know, when you need something of the other side. But some sellers, here's the next point. Some sellers are looking to see how tech savvy you are. I've kind of had a hint at that. Um, you know, I do have a video for us at the break. And um, that is, so as we head into the break, we're going to watch this video and then come back. Um, but um, the a video um, in this video, there's this idea that you can give them some homework in advance. With, with digital, okay? With that digital presence, you're able to give them some homework. That gives you traction, that you're able to track, you can see that they tuned in and you know every step of the way, you know you're getting closer to your signature on the dotted line. So we'll watch that video as we go to break. I want you to think of your prospecting method this can be really important. You know, um, uh, a seller who invites you in the door, the packets that, that I'm dropping off with, um, with Brianna after this, these hard copy packets, this was a result of door knocking. Knock, knock, knock. I'm, uh, you know, I'm Nicole, this is Brianna. We took a look in your neighborhood and, you know, want to chat with you about if we get, over, you know, if we get um, multiple buyers, would you entertain an offer right now? Um, and so seller invites you in the door. You, you, yes, we've seen the house and now we've got to go to the appointment and we've got to do the preparation. Um, but that seller at the door is probably, you know, they might need a hard copy delivered. You know, if, if you're in that moment and you got two minutes and you're not really going to go inside the house because you've got other appointments and you've got to canvas this neighborhood, you're going to set that appointment to come back. And um, you're, you're probably going to need to deliver that hard copy packet ahead, you know, the night before your appointment. A Mojo phone call, however, some of you might have seen, I um, did the training on Mojo phone dialing. And um, I literally, on the training, just like this, um, got a, um, a great seller lead. And, and so that seller lead on the phone, they might need to be impressed instantly, okay? They might forget about you in the morning. You were just a phone call that came in. They get 85, you know, telemarketing calls a day. You might have just been one of those and you might need to instantly impress them. So you might want to focus on, if you're a heavy phone prospector, you might really want to focus on the online delivery to set them on their path of, of accomplishing their homework. Um, but start with your content, do not get stuck, okay? Um, we're close to a break here. I'm gonna give you my $30,000 lesson and I hope that this saves you the $30,000 that I almost lost not figuring this out sooner. Um, start with your base camp today. Done is better than perfect, okay? So we're gonna take a look at, this is my $30,000 example. I am going to take us over to this property address, 19708 Cameron Avenue in Covina. So as we take a look at this, I want you to know I was probably two years into the business focusing on um, open houses and um, getting lots of leads in my four hours while the girls were at, um, while the girls were 19708, I think it was, um, while my twins were in kindergarten. Um, and um, I was picking up a lot of names and phone numbers 
and um, I was um, learning the art of sales. Many of us, we come to the to the table feeling like, um, okay, I've got a, a realtor's license now. I'm I'm an agent. Um, one of your first questions when you come in the door is, what do you want your title to be? And um, that question asks us, you know, to deal with a lot of psychology. If you're a person like me who's had a lot of jobs, I don't know whether to call myself, uh, you know, uh, a newspaper thrower, a uh, collector, a um, uh, you know, uh, a marketing director, a, a inside salesperson. Um, many of us have had lots of experience, great experience that brought us to the table. And we step in and we don't know what title is going to be most appropriate. We know from the DRE, this is a, we've got to understand words and ideas and be precise. And we've got, we, that's just inherent in creating and, and understanding other people's value and translating it with dollars. These ideas are inherent. So we come to the table and we got that first question. Okay, go ahead, fill out your business cards. Are you an agent? Would you like, you know, associate broker? Would you like realtor? Would you like, um, would you like sales associate? Would you like, um, you know, uh, sales professional, um, though at that very second, we have to grapple with, is this sales? Am I, am I, am I a sales agent? And that idea might, you know, continue to work on you and your mindset as you understand what's absolutely necessary to move your business forward the same way that it did for me, it might. Um, and so I reluctantly, after the four years of, or I'm sorry, the two years of open house, you know, four hours a day collecting names and phone numbers. Remember when I came into the business, um, it, open houses, vacant homes were rampant in those years. Um, the, the, the contract changed. It took termite off of, uh, you know, off of the contract in 2013, I think, because um, buyers, um, investors, competitors needed to have a way to win the offer and give the seller something extra. Um, so in the years when I came into the business, I could pick an open house any day of the year. I'm in Southern California and I could sit there and I would put my sign out and I would have four names every single time stop by and have conversations with me. So I was graced and blessed with a whole lot of conversational experience that today new agents do not have. They can't, they, they do not afford that. So I'm going to encourage those who are new agents in this format in our forum today and, and watching this in the future, I'm going to encourage you to really, we need to, as managers, as, um, you know, as experienced professionals with, um, with new agents around us on our team, we need to really encourage and we need to open that mindset that gets back to a lot of scripting, because that's something that's not available in the same fashion that it was to me eight years ago. Okay. Um, in any event, I had those couple years years of, uh, you know, of, of conversations with buyers coming through the door. And um, I had met a lady um, come through the door and she shared with me this story. And it, it, I was able to put it together. You will find every single conversation you have in this business. You're putting things together in a new way that's going to get you closer to your signature, closer to your next piece of business, closer to helping more people. And um, the uh, this um, seller for Cameron, I, I hope everyone's seeing my MLS now, 19708 Cameron. Um, the uh, a lady about my age up here, basically uh, um, a mom, uh, came through the open house and she said, you know, oh my mom's thinking of selling, and. Um, but she, you know, she, this might be a nice house for her. It's not for me. They, you know, a lot of them come in the door. You'll have conversations. They're going to call on you and your expertise and your license. Once they know who you are and what you do, they're going to call on you to help them, you know, fish out the conversations that's going on in their life. And so she stops at the open house, tells me about her mom. Um, she leaves me her information um, and she gives me enough clues in the conversation 
she tells me, oh, yeah, yeah, but it, it, it's, it's, she's coming from a, uh, however many square feet, a 3,400 square foot house. And I'm sitting at, a, you know, a, a 1,200 square foot house, you know, a, a mile away, and I've got no air conditioning. And, and this, whatever the environment is, it is, this is an example of how it's going to suck the details of their objections of the, what they're trying to work out. And it's going to just play out in front of you if you're listening if you're tuning in and she um you know oh but you know she just put in two new you know um two new air conditioners and she you know she's done all this work and this house would not work for these reasons so i don't need to give you this information because it's not about this house that you're standing in nicole um I was able to put enough clues together. She did, you know, reluctantly, these were in the old days when you would handwrite a name in the registry book. Um, and, and there are tools that can bring you along the way. I know, I know, I know. And, and there are tools. Um, you know, I moved then from the old registry book to Spacio on an iPad. And Spacio is one of those apps. Um, and I'll put it in there for you. Um, I, I think even today with, um, even today in COVID, things like Spacio can even become a little bit outdated. Um, but it, it is one that I still use. Uh, and it is one that I still use because it helps me track each person, spacio.com. So it, it helps you track each person to which event or activity that, um, that I met them at. Um, but in any event, um, you know, you, your job is to put these pieces together. They're not going to give you the whole story and say, here, I'm a listing for you. They're going to give you strings that they're trying to put together and to make something happen of value in their life. So anyway, um, this uh, lady comes through the door. She, she doesn't give me the address. I am able to piece it together with the last name on title. I can tell from the last name and I can tell this is the house we're talking about. I felt like I, I needed something. It was the first time I put together a weekend exposure with um, needing to get something to this lady's door, not to the daughter, um, but to the mother who was making the decision. And she did tell me, oh yeah, she's making the decision, you know, next week. Um, she's, she's getting ready. She's got something medical that needs to happen. So I knew it was the first time I realized my interaction with this person it, 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 who's a random third party of the actual transaction. If I put the information together, if I'm listening enough, I can put this together towards a sale. Okay. And so um, I, uh, you'll see on here, there are three, um, there are three listings. One of them wasn't expired. And I knew that I had to get my listing packet out to this, um, to this seller who was not, um, not the lady that I had the connection with. And, um, and so what I had to do was get something at the door. Oh my gosh, something at the door that's going to make this lady think about me in a positive way. She's going to know my reputation. That's the pre-listing package for years. I've heard about the pre-listing package. I have to get something to her door. What am I going to get? Well, I would have the marketing background and I had been collecting things and later on uh, after the break, and we've got about 10 minutes before the break later after the break, we're going to cover things like um, in our resource center, um, we've got a, a resume, a cookie cutter resume. So if you haven't found the cookie cutter resume, I literally just did one last night for, um, for Brianna. I see you in there, Brianna. I saw your picture. Um, but literally, Brianna, you're in there, right? Just tell us how many minutes it took to create your resume with the Berkshire tools. It was super quick. I just had to like tailor it to me plus whatever I wanted. So maybe 10, 15 minutes at the very most. Awesome. And then how long did the idea of a resume intimidate you to where you didn't do it? Um, years. <laughs> Too many years. I haven't had a resume since probably 2015. Maybe. Okay. And I, I appreciate your bravery. And that's what this big team is for. We all have to face our, our weaknesses at some point in this business. And our job is to continue to strengthen those weaknesses. We play our strengths first. And that's why Brianna is a great agent because she's not afraid to play her strengths first. 
and she does it with with you know with the utmost pride and and you know perfection but we do have to face the fact that there are some things that we might be lacking and to help us get over that together that's our hurdle and we do that as a team brianna if i love thank you so much for sharing that you're you'll see these uh, templates i've got great templates you know and berkshire has awesome tools that are going to make you it, you know, have those capabilities to overcome something that has really been, uh, you know, something you have not dealt with in years um, and, and get you over that hurdle in 15, 20 minutes, you know, when you need it. So um, I want to go back to the screen share so that we can take a look at, um, at the MLS so you guys can see how I was able to put this together at, in order to share these, you know, resources with you. Um, Let's see, um, my screen share is you having a little bit of a hurdle, but um, we will get there quickly. Okay, so on the MLS, um, I, uh, I wanna show you something. Um, I'm hoping that everyone is able to see the um, screen share now um, of my 19708 Cameron. Okay, um, uh, I'm assuming that's a yes. Cool, thank you. Okay, so um, you'll notice something, this is the property. And um, this is the expired, okay? And um, take a look, sadly, sadly. Um, okay, wait, 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 that's not the right one. Okay, here we go, this is the cancellation, okay. Um, you'll notice uh, it was canceled. Um, this was after 91 days. So poor Nicole had 91 days of sweating. Oh my gosh, why did I let that stop me? Um, this is not my name down here. I did not get this listing. Um, I want to show you this. Okay, take a look at it. First, you know, this is one of the reasons why I got the listing. <clears throat> You'll notice um, if things that I see now, um, aside from the fact that that is my listing packet, my listing packet on her countertop, because I dropped it off a day too late. Okay, um, there are dark pictures in here. That's a, a horrible image of her. Look at the, the dead grass. Um, we're not really cleaned up and ready. Dark pictures, what is that a picture of? Dark, um, dark, um, can't see what that room is. There are a number of factors and this is you know, just divine for Nicole, um, but uh, you know, what are we looking at here? Um, that's Nicole's listing package opened up during the photos that the other agent is taking, okay? So this is how critical you can lose a $30,000 commission if you are stuck on, whoa, I don't know what to put together. Um, what, you know, what should I do? Should it be online or should it be um, in print? Or if you take those extra days and I was, um, I had that marketing background, um, I wanted to have a perfect listing package, PLP. And I had heard about it and I knew I had to put these things together. I took three days and I, I coach, my coach asked me, did you get that out there? No, I, I was kind of stuck on this idea. I wanted to have something a little prettier. I didn't know what kind of cover letter I should do. And, um, you know, I wanted it to open up and be so pretty. I wanted pretty, 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 pretty. And pretty, pretty, pretty almost cost me $30,000. Okay, so um, when you put all these pieces together in your business next, this is going to help you to, to get out there and go secure the listing. Now, happy story. Um, this, the one that sold, uh, the one that sold was my listing. She was overpriced. Um, you know, I, I do have a phenomenal photographer and, um, I, you know, I, my marketing pretty, you know, is one of the factors that, that won me the sale. Um, you know, but if I hadn't, um, and I'll, I'll share with you, you know, sometimes, we have to go through rounds of price adjustments and we call them price adjustments, not price reductions because our poor seller gets stabbed in the heart every time we talk about a price reduction instead of a market adjustment. Um, and, and guys, these are not my ideas. These are things that I have absorbed from real estate greats like Tom Hopkins. Um, so go research those names that I'm throwing out there. You'll find prolific. Um, when you find great 
colleagues, they are going to help you rise. Um, um, but I did have to take this from 40 pictures, um, you know, with, you know, lots, and I won't bore you with the, the MLS story. Um, take a look at my description down here. And this is not really how, you know, this is not the fine tuning logistics of a winning sale. Once you have the listing class, um, this is really just about the pre-listing package. And as we head out to the break in about five minutes, um, uh, you know, keep this in mind. This is only trying to pour a lot of information into your head about how important the pre-listing package is. But all of these ideas are going to play into your next listing. So um, for that particular um, sale, I'll just kind of go through the, the logistics of this sale. The, um, the seller met another agent who was, you know, a very, very well-known agent. Um, the agent Agent was not taking professional pictures. Um, take a look at this description. There's a two-line description here. So we, when our buyer starts online, if we're going to use two lines to impact their heart, falling in love with this aspect of the sale, um, where they start, it's not, it's not going to work in today's environment. And it didn't work in that environment. It just so happened the whole balance got agitated to the spot where the dog bites the listing agent. And, um, you know, it's just that kind of environment where when things are not right, they're just going to compound into a really not right spot. Um, you know, then my listing package shows, you know, up, I wait my 90 days, I see that this cancels, and I go reach back out to the seller, and um, I'm able to secure, uh, you know, the listing, I'm using, you know, all 11 lines of the description, and I'm making, you know, people fall in love with this majestic mid-century modern home, and my photographer, who is from the Inland Empire Homes magazine, and knows how to make this beautiful, and and, um, you know, so having the right resources around you and understanding the factors of the sale, you know, my photographer put the, the cue the right way and set the, you know, that's not me, that's my resources. Um, but knowing where your resources are and being able to convey that to a seller when you sit down with them or ahead is going to be that difference that is going to have a successful sale versus a cancellation versus no signature at all. So, um, you know, and then nuances like, okay, we were still overpriced. We still, you know, um, you can't see it because I don't know why that little sticker is up there, but we started at 1.1. Um, and we used the eights to try to attract some eight infinity energy. Um, it didn't work. It still went to the end of its course. And um, the seller did relist with me. But I had to go to the investor all caps, you know, to scream, there is value here. Um, and we had to start out of the gate, you know, at a ridiculous price. Um, the 978 was really only because in escrow we we had a um, we had a thirteen thousand um, dollar septic um, uh, issue that caused um, an adjustment. So. Um, in any event, we've got to try so many things to secure the listing. But if you don't try something today, um, you're not going to you're you're not going to have that that flow to synergy that's going to result in successful, you know, um, successful listings. Um, so um, I'm going to close out now. It, it's now eleven o'clock, and um, I'm we're going to close out on a video. And um, for those that need a break, you know, I periodically need water. Um, you know, you might have some phone calls to make some, uh, some communication to get secure in the 10 minute. We will, um, we're gonna watch a 10 minute video. And again, I am um, sharing with you the screen. So don't feel like you have to watch this here, this video. Um, your time now might be precious. And I wouldn't know that. If it is, take your, take your break. We will come back here at 11 um, 20. This video is a 10 minute video and thereabouts and um, and then we will do a 10 minute break after that 
And, um, and then, um, so if you have already seen the video or if you are okay watching the video later, then um, I want to encourage you, you'll have the resources. Um, we're gonna just um, skip through the ads and um and then um let's see okay hang on see the video, Nicole. It's stuck cool. on the i appreciate it brianna thank you okay so this video is um so that you know the link is in there go take your break or watch the video for the next 10 minutes and then take another 10 minute break and i will be back here at 11 20 and i want to share with you the last um the last 15 or 20 minutes of today are going to be literally um, what I put in my listing packet, where you can get quick and easy resources like Brianna did, and um, so that you can have something for your listing, even if it's tomorrow, okay? So we are gonna jump into that video now for those that need the break, go for it. How to create a pre so what goes into a pre-listing packet or a pre-listing packet template hi my name is Chris Scott real estate digital marketer at the paperless agent and I'm going to show you how to create a pre-listing packet using our five part pre-listing packet template so um, the pre-listing packet that we use is actually a pre-listing packet email now the reason why So I can link to files, I can link to videos. I do it with a... Uh... Sorry guys. So the first thing you're going to notice is the subject line says actions required before our appointment on Friday. Now, the reason why this is important is that we have to make sure that the email gets read and they're going to see our name and we want to make sure that the subject line is compelling enough that they're going to at least open it because they know that there's something that they have to do. And so there's some urgency built into it because we know we have an appointment with them on Friday and that the action they have, there's some stuff they have to do, right? So for our pre-listing packet email, it's being sent after we've had a conversation with them on the phone, but before we've gone on a listing appointment. And so we're just gonna confirm the time of our appointment and we're gonna put that right into um, the subject line in terms of letting them know that there's stuff they have to do. And then when you get in right into the email, it's the first thing that it says is that as a reminder, our appointment is Friday at 6 p.m. or whatever the time is, right? Um, now, the next thing we immediately transition into is we're going to ask them to do four things. And these uh, four simple activities are really what construct the essence of um, this, this pre-listing packet template. So the first thing we're going to have them do is watch some videos. And I refer to those um, watching videos as having confidence links there. These are links to tools, resources, in my case, videos. Um, videos that will build their confidence, right? Build trust, build their confidence in our confidence as real estate professionals so they know we can take care of them. So I, in our confidence links under the section where it says, watch these videos, I've got some links to, you know, how to real, how to market your home in the Austin real estate market, uh, how to get your home ready for sale, home pricing strategies. These are all educational videos designed to answer these questions that I know they probably have. Um, now, before I get in there, I do uh, make a transition into making that request. So you'll notice that it says, watch these videos. Uh, please take 10 minutes to watch these short videos and getting ready to sell your home. Spending 10 minutes now will save us 45 minutes later. So watch these because I'm gonna save you time later. That's, there's a, uh, because of this, now hopefully they are gonna be more willing to spend the time watching them. As a side note, you'll notice in this email template that there's a lot, anything that's in bold is important, right? So the stuff that's bolded is in Um, so then you'll see that the second activity that we asked them to do is a review my property marketing plan, which is the next section of this pre-listing packet email. 
template is to include something about property marketing. Now, in the email, it says, marketing your home is one of my biggest jobs, and I take it seriously. We will discuss my marketing plan uh, for your home before when we meet, um, but you can check out the, the actual property marketing plan here. And what I do is, when they click on that, it takes them to a, a link where they can view, it actually takes them to a file where they're gonna see everything that we're gonna do to market that home. And now, will they read the whole thing? I mean, ours is like 10 pages long for our property marketing plan that we use. Uh, will they read it all? Um, probably not. They may just scan it. Heck, all I want them to do is know that I have one and that it's very detailed and that they don't need to worry about it, right? Because that property marketing plan is part of what's gonna set us apart, right? So that um, I don't know, let's say they are working, they are talking to other real estate professionals. Perhaps um, so, uh, you know, a discount firm is, is marketing to them. I wanna make sure that they know what we do differently to get the result, to get the outcome that they're ultimately what I refer to as client onboarding. This is traditionally a human resources term to refer to getting employees to perform and the steps that are necessary to get an employee to perform. I've changed this around to getting the steps for a prospect to become and perform as a client. So what do I do? Um, I have a link to, and I tell them to download our client welcome kit. And I'll just read the, the language here so you can get a sense of how we're positioning it. It says, as a new, as a new client, you're entitled to all the benefits my firm offers. Uh, they're outlined in your client welcome kit. You also find information and resources to help you move. Feel free to share a copy with you know personally. So again, this is a document that just kind of outlines everything that we do, the services that we provide, um, how they can engage us and how they can work with us, right? So that it just makes it easier. Uh, a lot of times, what I have found is as you're working with somebody, they may not know everything that you're capable of doing. You know, maybe they don't know that you can help them with luxury homes, or maybe if you sell luxury homes, they don't know you, they, you can help them with non-luxury homes, or you can help them with investment homes, or um, you know, any particular niche. Sometimes we get very focused on you know just taking care of our customers. We forget that because we might service a certain type of customer or a certain niche or a certain market or a certain type of inventory that we're able to take care of all of it but if our clients get to know us as only doing one thing they may reach out to somebody else for other needs that they have a big part of it too is just knowing how to engage us and what are the advantages of working with us so that's what we include in the client onboarding section of this pre-listing packet template and then we get into the fourth piece which is the homework um, here we're engaging this concept of time spent, where the more time they spend interacting with us, engaging with us, actually spending time with us also, is the more likely they're going to, where they're going to be the people that they work with because they spent most, um, most time with us as opposed to other folks. You know, by asking them to do homework, um, we're getting, we're asking them to comply with two little things, right? Two micro conversions, because ultimately what we're trying to do is leading up to the appointment, leading up to um, the listing appointment, leading up to being uh, getting a signed agreement with them is there's a whole series of steps where we want to make small asks, right? We want, we want to ask and we want them to accept these offers so that when we get to the place where we're asking them to sign the listing agreement, that it's going to be the natural next conclusion of where this relationship is going. And so I start very beginning in the pre-listing package just by asking them to reply to the email by sharing your home's best features, improvements, and selling points. Um, this is important to explain why we need this. It says, I will use this to create compelling marketing to attract buyers so now I'm giving them a reason why to take the few moments minutes that it'll take to respond um, and the second homework piece is please reach out to your lender to get the current loan balance we'll use this information to calculate what you'll what you'll net from your home's sale after assessing your home's pricing strategy again very important we explain what we're going to do with this information if we're going to ask them to either go get it or put it together um, now if they don't respond and if they don't do this it's not the end of the world it's okay we're just trying to engage them in this capacity. Now, you skip down to the bottom of this pre-listing packet email template, and you'll see there's a little PS, and it says, check out the property marketing plan I used to attract buyers and sell homes well above the competition's average performance, and feel free to share it with anyone you know personally thinking of moving. Now, the PS is oftentimes the only thing someone might read if they're in a rush and they're busy. You know, remember, as much as we like and we take pride in the services that we provide, uh, people don't necessarily look forward 
to the selling of their home, right? It's not a thing that they're like, oh, I can't wait to sell my home. No, no, there's usually another outcome on the other side of it, and selling the home is the obstacle obstacle to getting to that outcome. And so knowing that, you know, you might have some people scanning. They're like, all right, I got this appointment Friday. So I just want, if I, if I, there's one thing I could get them to do, it's for them to check out that property marketing plan so they know how we stand out in the marketplace. It really sets up all the future conversation that we're going to have. Why? Because now they know that what we do differently. I've got something, a building block to build on for a superior set of promises that I'm going to make, you know, when we go on that listing presentation, when we go on that listing appointment, they now know, or I'm equipped now, I've equipped them to know, and we'll follow it up with the conversation during the listing appointment itself. But now I've equipped them to know, wow, this is everything that you do. Yeah, maybe there are some people who will just put the home in the, on the MLS and put a sign in the yard and hope that that sells, but that's not what we do at our firm. At our firm, what we do is all of these things to ensure you get the best possible outcome, right? You're going to learn about what the outcome that they're looking for, but you know the big outcomes are time and price, right? That's some of the bigger outcomes that our marketing plan can assist with, and so those also translate into other things like less hassle and um, sort of a sense of certainty of what's going to take place. And the more we can do that, um, of course, the better experience they're going to have. And having a tool that they can understand what we're going to do is a way to make ourselves stand out and set ourselves apart. Okay. And that's what goes into the five-part pre-listing packet template. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about how to create this pre-listing packet or use this pre-listing packet template, I've included a link in the description of this video where I've got a blog post where I outline more detail and examples of what the property marketing plan looks like and what the client onboarding document looks like or the client welcome kit. And so if you want to get access to those or get more uh, more of an insight on what should go into those parts of this pre-listing packet email template, just click on that link below. And of course, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel. I'll see you. Take care. recording okay phenomenal thank you guys for um for enduring through the break and coming back today again is april 24th and this is part two uh of the pre-listing package i'm nicole davis with berkshire hathaway home services california properties and branch manager for our covina hills office and um, having looked at the objective of a pre-listing package and looked at um, what it, uh, you know, what it's supposed to do and some options for what to put in it, I'm next going to jump at where to start, how to start with yours. I closed the, uh, the first half out with a $30,000 lesson um, for advocating do not wait on putting your pre-listing packet together today. The moment where you will need to call on something to deliver either electronically or, um, or hard copy packet for a home seller to help arrive at a successful listing uh, agreement 
It could be any time and we all know that. And so I wanna help you um, with that question. Where do I start when I put this together for myself? You wanna be ready for that phone call that says, come list me. We all have those. The, the longer you put your information out there, um, the more you will get. And that come list me phone call could be in the fashion of an uptime phone call. Um, if you're in one of those shops where your reputation is known just by your geography and um, your home sellers in your neighborhood are looking to your office, you may get an uptime phone call where you need this information now uh, to deliver now. So where do you start? Um, keep in mind, this is confidence building. This is what this packet is designed to do. You want information to build up your seller's trust in your reputation. Now that reputation might be in the form of Berkshire. It might be in the form of literally your name um, or your experience or past. So one of the first places that I look to to create my listing package and we're heading into this session now, the second half, where I just share with you what I have in my pre-listing package. Um, uh, and this is, I put it together cookie cutter. I have, you know, 10 of these ready to go so that I can customize each time, but I have the backbone ready. Um, you want to make sure you've got your listing presentation. Your listing presentation is going to be a great source. So go to the resource center. Um, I'm going to switch gears now and head over to um, at my actual um, resource center to share with you where to find these if you're not familiar. Um, and Berkshire does put together um, several uh, different listing presentations regularly. So can I have um, some feedback? Is everyone seeing my resource center now with the Berkshire Hathaway logo in the top left? Yes. Okay, very cool. Thank you so much. All right. Um, and then, um, okay, so in inside of the resource center, we, we all start with our, um, you know, with, uh, I'm just going to go from the login. Um, you know, as we log in, you're looking for that marketing tile. That's where you're going to find the information for, you know, anything marketing. Um, so I think top, uh, top right is where that marketing tile is, is always located. Um, but you can always also type um, listing. And then I, I always like, because I like PowerPoints, um, you know, to start with, they're easy to grab information, but you can just start with the entering the search term listing PowerPoint or listing presentation. Um, and that's going to get you several, um, several different drafts. Now, um, Berkshire puts out like a luxury collection. We, um, there's a marketing proposal. These are all different formats. You know, maybe you don't like the, the landscape. Um, you know, maybe you want something that's a little bit, you know, eight, eight, eight and a half by five and a half, but you'll see when you come in here, there are different versions. So, um, you know, one is a traditional long, you can get condensed. There are Spanish and French Italian for this particular listing. You can also just grab the images. And so by just coming in here and figuring out what you like, you're going to be able to pull some images for what you want. So um, I use something, I use the G drive. I'm going to share that with you so that you can um, you can see what I'm looking at here. It, it, for those that are familiar with Google, I'm just, you know, from the spot where I'm looking at my Google, my email, um, I can literally um, click on the nine dots in the top right. And this will take me to all of the Google apps. I can go to my Google Drive and I store everything in my Google Drive. And I'm just gonna um, share with you, um, I have a pre-listing package um, file so that I can just grab whatever I need. And now this is a sample for Saturday series, but I have a sample for my team also. And um, so here are, here's what's inside of my pre-listing package. I, I've created a pre-listing um, presentation 
that is completely separate from the Berkshire presentation. This one here, the home selling proposal with the with the tan bar across it. This is an old version. And I think Berkshire comes out with, it feels like just about on the year, every year they'll create, they'll kind of give us refreshing, um, you know, information for a, a, a listing presentation. So this is literally a few years old, but I really like it because it it had the images that I need needed. And it I liked the, um, I liked the format, so um, I, I use it. Um, your needs come first, uh, you know, the goal of effective marketing, um, you know, some standard marketing national advertising piece references. Um, and then this one I crafted myself, it's a, um, a calendar. So very often if I'm just looking for a light version of, of a hard copy, I will only print out this page. And um, I, I'm more than happy to share this with you um, as well. Your manager probably has some, you know, has different versions for you. Um, things like this image and the, the California properties and the Mulhern group images, you can probably get those from your, your manager, but I'm happy to share this listing presentation with you as well. I have probably five or 10 different listing um, presentations, some that I've crafted on my own, some that have been only from Berkshire Resources, some like this with the Mulhern bus, you know, to be able to explain, you know, very concisely to a seller, you know, that we've been around for a long time. Um, you know, we have 20 locations, or I, I think um, the number might be different and it changes from time to time. But um, these are these are things that I, I can easily share with you. You can also get them from your manager. And I encourage you build that relationship with your manager. When your manager knows that you've got these questions and you're digging in in these ways, your manager is going to be able to support you more, better, faster. Um, your manager is going to know what you need next. And um, you want your manager in tune with what you're doing. Um, so you, by all means, I'm, I'm here as a resource, but I want you to go to your manager because your manager is going to be, you know, everyday boots on the ground for you. Okay. Um, but those are, that's, a, you know, a look at what, um, uh, at what I do with some of those listing presentations from Berkshire. Now, um, in, in addition, inside of my G drive, I want these ready to pull. Something that I have is homes that I've sold. So this is just a thumbnail from the MLS. Now I realize many of, uh, you know, as we're new agents, we might not have, you know, four pages of listings that we've sold and, and that's okay. That's totally okay. You you can do this with what your office has sold. There's nothing wrong with saying, here's what my company has sold in the neighborhood. And that's just as simple. I'm, I'm jumping around now to the MLS. You can just do a, a screen um, search, uh, you know, I'm sorry, a, a quick search of what's sold in the last 365 days from your office. Now, these are these might be kind of advanced. No one shared this with me. I, I had to put hours into it, but there is a field called um, on the MLS, um, it's called listing office name. You can also see the listing office MLS ID number. Okay, so for those, and, and if you have been in tuned with um, some of my earlier trainings, I show you how to do that. And I'm, I can do that anytime, but I encourage you to watch the Saturday series to get that information. It's a little more drilled, drilled down. Um, but, um, you know, something as simple as looking at someone's listing who, um, you know, who, you know, is in your office and go down below and find um, on a, a one of the office listings, find this listing office uh, um, ID number. Ours is 2171. Ours is a little bit complex. Yours might be complex too. Ask your manager for help there. Um, but um, you, you want to pay attention to what your office has done. If you don't have the sales to come up with a, a homes that we've sold, 
from my office. Homes that Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, um, Covina Hills has sold. If you don't have that, um, you can create one. And I encourage you to do that, okay? This is just building your reputation so that you step in the door, you've got something online where you can show the history of what's happened before you. So that's one that I encourage. And then, um, you know, to jump back to the MLS, it, when you want that and you do your printout down below, you have these choices you can just print your thumbnail you can print print a customer thumbnail and that's going to give you the look that i have on that particular sheet there okay so um something else that i do um in that goes inside of my pre-listing package is my resume now i'm gonna share with you on this Google Drive document that I'm um, hovering over here with my picture. Um, there's a, not an easy conversion between the Word document version that I use and I print from and that, that sits and houses in my G Drive. So there's a technology gap. When I open this up, you, you know, it's going to look a little funky. And I kept it here just for organization in my mind so I could show you. Um, this document actually looks a little bit prettier. I did get this from the Resource Center and, um, uh, oh good, it's, it's showing up nicely right now. It just wasn't in the other one, but um, this document is, I call it my resume. It, when you go into the Resource Center and you type the word resume, um, you will come up with this document, okay? Um, and it, it, I'm gonna go a different direction because I don't see it there through the search. So I'm gonna show you where you can find it most directly. And that is in that marketing tile. So if we go back to, uh, let's see, resource.com as we log in and we go to our marketing tile, um, you will go into the e-cards and that's where the resume is located. That's how um, Brianna was able to do this last night in 15 minutes. So go in here, I'm in the search bar type resume and you will see the different resume options that you have. And this is the flyer. You wanna make sure that you have the flyer, okay? And um, if you if you notice down here, these have got e-cards. E-card will not print out the e-newsletter. That's not going to print out for you to be able to put into your, if you're doing a hard copy, um, then you want to um, come in here to the flyer and, um, and you, you jump in here, put your information in. And um, you'll notice that it is um, it's super quick and easy. It gives you the categories already. Now, this is the current version, the one that I showed the image of. I, I personally like it a little bit better. It is a little bit prettier. Um, I like the palm tree image. You, you know, uh, I don't so much like the categories. This is an old version of what was available in the resume. Um, through the resource center. So the current resume now cookie cutter, it drops your picture, it drops your BREN number as long as you have your profile in the resource center. Um, it's got these categories about a general credentials and you know it's in Latin. You have to go plug the information in. You, you probably have more information in there than you think. And um, you are more than welcome. I, I can send you my version if you just want some uh, easy language to throw in there. If you can't think of any ideas, um, I, I have no problem with you copying this because I got it from the resource center. Um, I threw in there, you know, that I am, uh, you know, my title, the board that I belong to, car, those are things you might not think of doing. And it, you know, the resource center isn't really encouraging you to, but if you're just looking for filler language, there's some good filler language in there. My, my husband is English and foreign language. I, I was that as well. So I have lots, you guys can tell, I have lots of filler language all over the place. The specialty language. Now take a look at this um, and your website. If for those who have a um, BHHS um, website, um, mine is the Davis team. 
www.bhhscaprops.com. Um, that's going to afford you some some cookie cutter language too as you design that. So you know when you're when you're looking for language, don't hesitate to jump in here. They automatically create a professional resume for you, and it's got standard language in there. Steal it, take it. This is your business. You just need to have some kind of influence. You just need a, a presence there. So um, that's the resume. That's one quick tip for, you know, getting that ball started. Um, it's in there. Go do it today if you haven't already. The next thing that I have in my listing course, um, I, I take my, my listing checklist with me so that my home seller, when I'm going for that appointment, my home seller sees that I work from a checklist. And it, for those that have watched um, the, the prior, I think we did the listing process the last time, I, I, I don't remember the last class, but one of the classes I, I shared some of this documentation, it was processes, systems and processes where we spent some time on this. And um, I take my listing checklist so that my, my sellers see that I, when I stepped in the door, I had already done these things. One of the first things you'll see on here is the title um, prelim. So um, I uh, you know, am putting that prelim in my pre-listing packet. Um, so that it, that prompts me when I sit down with the seller to say these words. And now, Mr. Home Seller, your bedroom, your home is a three bedroom, two bath house. It shows on title as a thousand square feet, 1057. Does that sound correct to you? It's going to jog that conversation of now we just saw the home really quickly when you stepped in the door and, um, you, you know, you were telling me about the shutters, you were telling me about all these things, but. Um, I want to make sure you have three bedrooms, correct? It's just helping you repeat that. Um, and then what did I do? I'm sorry, you guys. I um, In the, G the PLP is, let's see, Saturday. What else do I have in here? I have um, a cover letter. You know, I have something, I have a reference to COVID and cleaning, and this is just a marketing um, piece that I put together. Um, here's a good one, testimonial, okay? So um, if you don't have testimonials, I, I want to share another story with you. Um, I, for the first year, thought I didn't have testimonials. It took me a first year to have my first closing. Um, and again, you guys saw that journey. It was open house, gather, 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 and I was not turning the information to make it turn into something. But um, I thought to myself in my very first year, I don't have testimonials. So that doesn't apply to me. Um, when I had clients send me a gift basket in that first year, because I had showed them properties, I quickly realized I could ask some people for a referral I could ask some people for a testimonial because I have done actions for them. Your first listing appointment, maybe that, that you didn't secure, you can still ask them. You, you know, there are important questions you wanna ask. You wanna ask why you, know, why you didn't get the listing, but you wanna ask it in a more delicate manner. And you wanna present yourself as that agent who is sincerely interested in helping. The way that I ask that question is, you know, can you tell me this is valuable feedback? Um, what was it about the, the winning agent that, um, what was the decision point that the winning agent had that I can learn from for my future clients? So that's a way of gathering feedback for um, what other agents are doing that's winning. There's language, you know, things like that, that can help you arrive at that. But you probably have um, testimonials that you can use even if you don't have a, a, a closed sale. So I encourage you to think that direction but your testimonials are, are going to be something phenomenal. And then you want like a cover letter and, and I um, do my cover letter. I love the hard copy format and I'll, I'll show you, you know, literally what it looks like. Um, it, it before, I'm going to stop the screen share here and I'm share with you. I, I got a custom stamp because I want people to know and understand in this um, new era of transparency and real people versus the machine. I, I like things that look custom, like they look like me and I, I don't look like everyone else. 
And, um, and so I really emphasize something different. There's something different about this. I, I handwrite, and these are all principles that, you know, Bruce and the real estate gods really, really emphasize um, handwritten. You want things that set you apart. So if your eye gravitates to it, if you like it, the people who like you are probably gonna like it too. So I make the, the package, you know, pretty custom. Um, uh, I, I start out with the, the folders. You might be able to order these through your branch or through your manager. I put a custom letter on there with the Berkshire letterhead. And, um, you know, I have different versions at different points where I had a header this size. I had one down here. I had super, super pretty. I don't do super pretty anymore. Um, I really focus on just, you know, um, done is better than perfect. And um, so I'm putting in, uh, you know, my CMA is also in here. That's the CMA. I put in a net sheet. This is a good topic. Um, uh, I, I also put in um, talk, uh, you know, um, you'll see my testimonials, the client testimonials. You'll see my, there's that resume. There's, um, oh, sorry. There's the uh, testimonials, what my clients say about me the homes that I've sold. And then I put in some, some of the Berkshire things that you might recall from like recruiting that document. And I'm sorry guys, but some of our awards, the Berkshire awards, ask your manager for some of the stuff that um, you saw coming into the company. Um, you know, because some of you're, you're going to be able to use those. Um, if you are looking for that information that keeps you top of mind and and keeps you, um, you know, with that stellar reputi reputation with integrity. Um, I'm going to jump back to the uh, the PowerPoint because I want to make sure we cover a couple things. We're we're closing to the end, but you've got the resource center. Here's a um, let's see um, resume tools. Um, I was excited about our brand. It's easy to deliver. Um, I'm, you know, so ask your manager for help. Look through the resource center, put these things together. Here is what, um, you know, I've combined as a list for the perfect listing, um, pre-listing packet, a bio, testimonial, stuff about your brokerage, your marketing plan. What is your marketing plan? And you can find that in, oh, I see that the screen share is not working right now. So let me jump over there. Here's the list of um, the, the perfect pre-listing package, a bio, testimonials, broker, brokerage information, your marketing plan. Where did I get my marketing plan? I got it from the resource center in one of those PowerPoints. Um, and they're going to change from year to year. You might refresh, you might get, you know, some new ideas. Um, you want to encourage the uh, affiliations and your distribution channels. That was one great idea that, um, that I saw in there. And I'm going to share with you what, what that might look like. And you might have to go to your um, manager or to the website to craft something, you know, in particular. Um, but when um, I, I do reference the Castlehead information, your manager has this. You can easily, you know, print or, or you know, craft your own. Um, and then I emphasize, um, you know, our offices. So the organization chart as well, um, you know, to share that across is is going to give you some of that that backbone, some of that traction, um, and then, like I said, the award sheets. Um, you know, Ali is going to be able to help you with some of that as well. It, you know, it, um, and I know that she'll be covering some of that information, like on some of the the marketing resource training through the Saturday series. Um, so just really think about um, think about things in a different way. Your home sellers need to know and understand you have a team behind you and resources like Castlehead and OC Title, you want to present those information. This is a great place to do that. 
Um, uh, and then examples of digital print and marketing. You can pull you know, anything in there. You might show the ads. You might show the ad, um, the clip from AdWorks, you know, in your digital presentation. So on your iPad, you might have that AdWorks video loaded and ready to go. You want, might want to show market stats. That's something phenomenal. Like um, we saw in the chat, you're going to want to have that. So I do have uh, market stats and, and um, that I, I love that. That's a great idea. I don't put that in my pre-listing packet, but why not? I think I'll print that out and add these right now. Um, I do track the stats. Um, and and it, it would not be that hard for me to, um, this is something, you know, just that I do on my own. Um, I track the market stats and it's not a bad idea to include those in, um, you know, in the pre-listing package. So when I'm sitting down for a listing in Covina on, you know, April 19th or whatever to share with them, the progress is, you know, is something phenomenal. And you can, there, are, when you go through your board training, um, your board is going to train you for how to, um, Deborah, I will totally get you the, the, the um, PowerPoint, um, you know, and, um, and then I encourage you for the, the, PowerPoints that we saw on the resource center to to go dig those up and grab those. Um, but uh, let's see back to the PowerPoint. Um, uh, market stats is something excellent to have in your pre-listing package. A list of questions every seller should ask their realtor. Now, I don't have one of these, but it is a great thing to put in a listing package. I might put that on like an electronic version as well, um, but that's that's an easy Google search. You probably, you know, if you haven't thought of a listing plan, uh, a listing packet yet, you probably don't have one either, but go, go make one, go make one today. List of questions every seller should ask their realtor. And that's gonna establish you as, listen, I'm the Sherpa. I know how to get you where you need to go. Here are some questions you're probably asking. And to show that you know the answers before you step in the door is going to be critical. I mean, how, how are you going to not walk away with a successful signature if you've got all this stuff ready to go? Okay. Um, introduction to your additional services. This is where I am going to explain to them. I pick up the videographer. That's a cost that I incur. You in your business, you may not choose that. Same thing with TC. I do see on a lot of offers that come across where the, the buyer agent is asking the buyer to pay for their TC, that's fine. But it, this is a great place to introduce those resources. It establishes before you enter the, the house that you have a system in place, that you know how to do this. You have a big team. Um, so uh, a sample listing agreement. This is something that I do. I do give them sample listing documents already filled out and um, Yes, I will send you my resume and I will send you um, the listing package. You got it. Um, um, and, and then I am going to, um, let's see, I'm going to do a print screen of the, um, of the um, pat so that I make sure that I do actually follow up. Sorry, guys, you guys are seeing me kind of on the fly. Just try to be quick and keep what I need. Um, but um, yes, these are, uh, you, you're going to be able to craft these tools. Having a sample ahead of you is, uh, it, you know, is phenomenal. I'm, I'm blessed and, and um, honored to have you guys in here paying attention, asking questions. And um, uh, when you guys take more listings and you see my buyer come across your desk in the form of a purchase agreement, and we get a chance to work together and it's for the benefit of your client and my client. I know this is a win-win for everyone. Um, give your seller at that pre-listing packet, add the disclosures. I do that, especially if you're talking to a um, for sale by owner, for them to see and know the sample of the, the um, homework packet of the seller disclosures. It's going to put that fear of God in them that, oh my gosh, this is 80 pages of 
yes, no um, signatures that I really don't want to have to know and understand. And I'm so glad it's going to put that premium for the service that you provide that I have, you know, that I've got Xenia or I've got Dan or I've got Gayla watching out for me. So to have, you know, um, instill that, that premium through things like the homework packet, the seller disclosures. Um, they're gonna know why they pay you the 6%, why they are you know, ultimately you know, willing to give 3% to the buyer site and 3% to the, to the listing agent for all the work that you do. Okay, um, that is, that really I think is the end of my presentation. I would love to open it up to questions, ideas this has sparked, um, any engagement from you guys. I'm keeping notes in the in the chat and I will follow up. Um, so um, I love it, Allie. I love the hearts. I love it. Okay. So tell me guys, what are you going to do today towards your pre-listing package? Make a resume together yes excellent yeah and and then don't get stuck that's that's that was my thirty thousand dollar lesson do not get stuck if something is it, you know it, if it's not feeling exciting then tackle something that you heard from today that sounds exciting start with you know start with your strengths start with where it's easy Awesome, Neil, I love hearing that. Um, some of us, we started it and, um, and maybe we don't reinforce it along the way. This is something that I encourage you to reevaluate once a year. When you do the business planning for the following year, it always happens in October. You guys will notice and feel from this industry. When you do that in October and the season starts to take a different focus towards November, December, and January, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll feel a little fire to pre-plan for the following year. And that's when you should refresh your pre-listing package every single year. Okay. Um, awesome. I'm hearing a lot of making that resume. It's not that hard. We all come to real estate feeling like this is new and um, you have a bio, you have a, a, a resume. Um, you want to share that across to your clients. Um, yes, Gayla, explore the resource center. There is so much in there that, that even the most productive agents, even the most loyal Berkshire wearing Cabernet drinking, you know, agents with the most production, there's so much in there that we can't keep up. They constantly create new content with Gary Vaynerchuk and Vaynerchuk Media. There is always something new in there for us to leverage. This is the team that is putting it together for us to win for year after year after year. So um, I love it. Martin is, Martin is asking um, the legendary Mulhern bus picture. Um, I'll share it across to you directly. It, just make sure I have your email address in here. Awesome. Yeah, I will get those to you. Um, in fact, let me see if I can just like paste it in the chat. And I don't know if, it, if we're going to be able to do that, but I that would save me so much time and energy if I could do that. Hold on, you guys. Um, where was that? It was in my um, it was in my listing presentation. I hope it lets me do this. I love learning new things. OK, so I'm going to just right click, copy it and see if I can, if um, Zoom is gonna let me throw it in there. Let's see, um, to everyone, there we go. Oh, I don't think it's, well, nah, it's not letting me. Oh, there is a file. I do see somewhere over there. No, sorry, it's not, but um, I did save the chat and I will, um, I will email it to everyone who's, who referenced an email address in here. Um, I would bet Allie probably has even way cooler pictures than I do, um, you know, to throw in, into, um, into your presentation, but awesome. Susan, create resume, pre-listing packet. Um, and then let's see. 
um, the pictures resource center, um, old folders, custom letter sheets. Now, yeah. Um, now, um, Gloria from OC title shared with me years ago, um, a there, you can find this. There are letter, um, there are letter templates, real estate letter template books that you can purchase that you can, you know, use for your templates. So, um, I, that's all I have today. It sounds like we've got some great actions. We've all really committed to doing something and I want to work with you on my next buyer sale. So I want you to go get that listing with confidence, with pride, with great backbone, with great systems and tools. And I want to thank, um, oh, you guys are awesome. Okay. I cannot wait to work with you. So let's go get more business together. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I have.